Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, we are on case two, and we were going to start investigating the room. Um, yeah. Cool beans. So we're gonna examine everything now. Everything possible. These are the rules of passage for travel of work that- Oh my gosh, wait, 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 wait. Um... Text skip on. Okay. And then that should make the text box come out, like, right away, instantly. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Buria. It's essentially a list of requests from the captain to all passengers on board. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Hmm. What? What are you staring at me? Why are you staring at me? Oh, sorry. I was just thinking. Are you more of a dangerous object or a pet? <laughs> I can't decide. Well, one thing's for sure. Either way, I wasn't supposed to be in here. Oh dear, that won't do. Oh, what's the matter, Susato-san? Whenever I'm examining things, I always find myself so focused I forget to look around properly. Ah, yes, that's not good. I don't suppose you're as foolish as me in that regard, are you, Naruhodo-san? Yes, I know about looking around. <laughs> I'm sure you're careful to look all around using D-pad, aren't you? Now, let's investigate all corners of this cabin. That's what I was doing. Yes, let's do that. I suppose my field of vision has been rather small until now. It was the very first thing I examined! Calm down, guys! The books have fallen over on the shelf. Look, they've all toppled the same way. And what's this? A statue of some god of the sea? Although he's fallen over as well. Yes, it's almost as if the whole shelf has been ransacked and everything going down at once. I wonder if... Perhaps it was Kazuma-sama doing his morning sword training, do you think? I seriously doubt it. And perhaps... It was you, Naruhodo-san? In a fit of rage? I wouldn't have bothered leaving the wardrobe just to mess up a few books and a statue. Could the way these things have been thrown about have anything to do with the case, I wonder? Well, I'll just set everything straight again. I don't like to see a mess. No, don't. Why would you touch it? Don't- What? Why would you leave those spaces? What? These books are provided for entertainment of whoever is occupying the cabin, I suppose. And they must be well looked after. You mustn't damage any of the ship's property. But it wasn't me who knocked them over. Well, anyway, I feel much better now that they're neatly lined up. I can't relax when things are in a mess. You just ruined the scene of the crime! Oh my gosh! Hey, Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Oh my gosh, that's a lot of cats. How do you have so many different caddy boats? Oh, I'm so... Oh. She ruined it. When I went to help for help and the crewman forced the door open. This bolt had been firmly closed. Hmm, it's quite a small bolt and not particularly sturdy, and it just slides across this to secure the door shut. But still, with the door bolted, there would be no way to get in or out of the cabin, that's for sure. It's no wonder everyone suspects me. When she glares at me like that, I feel tense all up down all up and down my spine. I, I remember reading once in a detective novel, the culprit used a needle and thread to draw a bolt across from outside the room in a situation like this. Yes, that's a clever trick, isn't it? I'm an avid reader of detective stories myself. But the door of this cabin and its frame are made of metal and they seal per together perfectly. There would be no possibility of using that needle and thread trick here, I'm afraid. There's no way it fits perfectly. When she glares at me like that, I feel pins and needles all up and down my spine. <laughs> you deserved them. Haha, <laughs> for being one of the awesomest ladies out there. Oh, thank you for the kind words. Hope you enjoyed this game. I just finished this today, this chapter. Yeah, I can't wait to... I'm so sad that Kazuma's dead, but I can't wait to figure out the mystery between everything. I mean, behind everything. I've investigated thoroughly, but I can't find anything out of place. Okay, so that picture is nothing. How about this? I'm sorry, you can't find anything out of place 
about a candlestick that fell down. Excuse me? Oh, I forgot it has to be glowing and blinking. What do you think this is? It looks like a broken piece of glassware. Whatever the thing was, it appears to have broken clean in two. The glass is such a beautiful color. It looks like a cute little Netsuke fastener from a kimono outfit. I'm not sure that sounds like Kazuma. He wouldn't have secretly carried a cute little trinket like this around with him, would he? And the mark beside it, what is it, I wonder? It has sort of a brick-like hue. Yes, you're right. It's the color of brick, isn't it? Even though I don't see anything of the same color anywhere else in the cabin. Is it a brick or is it blood? Perhaps I should see what this Russian crewman makes of the scene of the crime. Um, excuse me. What? I I was wondering how it's going. The investigation, I mean. Grandmother told me Japanese people do not make jokes, but it is not true, I see. Sorry? The criminal is asking investigator for information about his crime? Very funny. Oh, it wasn't supposed to be a joke. He doesn't appear to be laughing either. He's convinced you're guilty. He might have useful information though. I have to keep trying. So, last night, did you notice anything out of the ordinary at all? Yes, of course not. Now back to corner of room and make silent. I say no more to you. Hmm, did I hit a nerve? Just for a minute there, he seemed a little flustered. He is hiding something. That's why I did it from last night. A roast chicken. It was really tasty. Yes, it was very delicious, wasn't it? But... Did you eat it on the floor here? I'm not a dog, suzuki san I ate at the table, of course. Which begs the question of when and how the plate ended up on the floor. But Kazuma-sama didn't like chicken at all, did he? No, that's right. So he didn't touch it. Which meant all the more for me. Oh no! Does... Does that mean... Poor Kazuma-sama spent his last night on Earth, this Earth with an empty belly? It's just too horrible. Ugh, now I suddenly have a guilty conscience and an achy stomach. Oh no, Kazuma! There's a knife here! That's my dinner from last night, roast chicken, it was really tasty, it was delicious. He spent his last night on Earth with an empty stomach. No, Kazuma! I still refuse to believe he's dead. There's nothing on this table at all. The plate and cutlery are, are all over the floor for some reason. Yes, it's strange. Last night when I went to sleep, I'm sure everything was still... No, wait a minute. What is it? That's funny. I can't seem to remember anything about what happened after dinner at all. Were you drugged? So, so then perhaps you are responsible for what happened to Kazuma Sama. He just said he didn't remember how... Susato. No, no, no. Oh, Susato, why? She's gonna be another ditzy girl. Seigi, the Japanese word for justice. The brushstrokes are straight and true, just like Kazuma. Yes, his calligraphy always was a reflection of his heart. Yet you, can you really look at those characters without feeling shame, knowing who drew them so thoughtfully? Of course I can. I mean, I'm innocent, so why shouldn't I be able to? Even though you stowed away on the ship? Now you're going to bring that up, are you? I can't win. It's like you saw that Yunosuke was innocent in um in the last trial you were with him at, and now you're just like, oh, you're so shady and suspicious. Like, what the heck, Susato? I think that's a kind of opening for a ventilator. A hole through which fresh air can circulate into the cabin. Isn't that a little odd? What do you mean? Well, this ventilator, if that's what it is. Looks like it must be connected to the next door cabin. Yes, it would appear to. You're right. But if its purpose is to allow fresh air into the room, surely it should be connected to the outside. Hmm, that's true. Perhaps it's so that rain and spray don't find their way when the seas are rough, or something like that? I suppose. Maybe that's it. This is... yes, it's a bell cord contraption, I think. What do you mean, contraption? 
I read about it in a book I was studying that talked about life in Great Britain. Large households often have bell cords like this, which you can pull to ring a bell to summon servants. Really? That sounds almost magical. Shall we give it a little try? Yes! In the interest of cultural research, cultural research obviously. I suppose nobody comes for lowly Japanese people. No, no, I'm sure it's just that everyone is busy, that's all. Okay, bell cord, Ditsy girls, cultural research, dingy toast. <laughs> ding, ding, ding! It's some two weeks since we sailed for, set sail from Japan. Have you really been living in that wardrobe the entire time, Naruhoto-san? I think living isn't quite the right description. Oh, no, I suppose not. Although it must have been rather exciting, making this voyage in your own secret hideout. The trouble was, I never knew when a member of the crew might come in. So yes, I did basically have to live in the wardrobe. And last night was no exception. But because of that, you had no idea what was happening out here in the cabin. No, sadly not. Mm. Oops! Sorry, I didn't mean to press the desk. Oh, but this is blinking. This is where dear Kazuma-sama would have sat whenever he was writing. London Diary. Poor Kazuma, he didn't even make it to his destination. It looks as though the last entry is incomplete. Which means, what? He was in the middle of writing it when the incident happened? Let's see what it says. It could be a valuable clue. Hiya! And it's out of the question! What? Kazuma-sama may have departed this world, but you must not read his private thoughts. But what if it's something important? Something relevant to the case? Alright, alright, I won't read it. Two, two times Susato has disturbed the investigation. She rearranged the books on the shelf, and she told me not to read the diary. I'm just like, no! Poor Kazuma-sama. I don't like prying into people's personal matters either. But in this case, isn't the need for clues more important? I thought I was going to like her. I don't like her. Oh no. That's a very large traveling case, isn't it? Yes, it carries a lot of memories in there. Memories? What do you mean? Well, that's actually how I stowed away on this vessel. I was brought on board inside that case. Ah yes, I see it says this way up in Japanese. Which in hindsight, I should have realized the foreign crewmen wouldn't be able to read. That was turned over and over and over. And then I was tossed on the floor in here. Oh dear, being a stowaway isn't as romantic as it sounds. Well, it was less painful than a Susato takedown. Hey, ink. Did, did Kazuma write that before he died? It looks like it's written in ink. He must have thought the ink popped from the desk when he collapsed on the floor. Then I suppose he wrote this message by dipping his finger in the spillage. Poor Kazuma-sama. No doubt he was in terrible pain. It's almost unbearable to imagine it. I suppose he was trying to leave some kind of a clue in his final moments, was he? I'm sorry, partner, but I can't read your writing. I don't think that's Japanese, Naruhoto-san. What? Then what language is it? It pays me to a minute, but I don't know. It's Russian! It's not a foreign script I'm familiar with. What does it mean, I wonder? Is it not Russian? Oh my word! Where did you come from? Who's that? He wasn't there a minute ago. As far as I can tell, it looks like he might be European. Oh, how did he... You've noticed the man too, have you? I have no idea who he is or how he got in here, but he looks suspicious and tall. Suspiciously tall! <laughs> Naruhoto-san, don't tell me. Do you really not know who that is? Um, well, no. I don't have any foreign friends or acquaintances at all. He doesn't look like a member of the crew. There's something very unusual about him. And he is investigating Kazuma's desk. Wait, and is he investigating Kazuma's desk? Or is he just playing on it? I can't tell. Well, in that case... We must simply- we simply must talk with him. 
Am I just imagining it? Or does Susato-san look almost uncontrollably excited? She does not look excited at all. She looks exactly the same. By the way, I expect that you've noticed already, but just in case. If you press A on people when they're in the crosshairs, you can converse with them. Alright then, I'll get that suspiciously tall gentleman in my sights and see what he has to say for himself. Oh, please do. Okay. So I guess since he's out here, I examined everything I possibly could. So. Poofy toast today. Poof poof. <laughs> Do you believe me now, now that you've seen the purple Gatorade for yourself? I still can't believe it. It, wow. The only colors of I know of Gatorade are red, orange, yellow, blue. That's crazy that there's a purple one. Also, hey, Golden, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Um, excuse me. Excuse me, do you have a moment? Shh, this is a critical point in my investigation. Maybe I should leave him alone. He seems a little unfriendly. Yes, perhaps that would be for the best. Ooh! Greetings. I hope I haven't uh, kept you. Ooh. Ah! Um, what exactly were you doing on Kazuma's desk just now? Ah, I see. Fascinating. Uh, sorry? What do you see? It feels like he's looking right through me. I had a red one earlier today. I'm guessing you like the orange flavor for the Mighty Ducks. Wait, Mighty Ducks drank orange Gatorade? But yeah, orange is my favorite. I don't like... I don't like yellow Gatorade, because I had to drink a ton of it for a medical procedure once, and I'm sick of it. Red, I don't really particularly care for, and blue's just like, eh. The Anaheim Ducks colors are black and orange. When did they change from to black and orange? I thought they used to be green and something else. I did not know they changed to black and orange. Oh yes, everything is clear now. I forgot he's British, so I'll try to do a British accent. The train of reasoning has run its course. My deduction have crystallized. You have been in Afghanistan, I perceive. Just recently returned, if I'm not mistaken. I've never been in Afghanistan. Sorry? What? And now, whilst venturing towards foreign climes, you find yourself in a most troubling predicament. Oh, well, that's true at least. But, but how? How the deuce did I know that, perhaps? It was really a most elementary deduction, hardly worth explaining. I am mixing so many different accents into this one dude. Have you perhaps managed to deduce anything else? But of course, a great many things. There's no mystery, my dear madam. For example, you have fled your native land of Russia, being, as you are, a merciless revolutionary. What? <laughs> you leave 16 victims of assassination in your wake, and now you travel to England to blow up the Crystal Tower. What? <laughs> and when the berry... berry... <clears throat> oh, be ribboned. When the be-ribboned occupant of this very cabin discovered your identity, you ended his life too. Yes, I believe that summarizes the facts beautifully. No need to hide the truth now. Nothing deceives these eyes. When the Disney deal ended, oh, I, I guess they wanted to like get rid of those colors then. So, dab. How you doing? Long time no see. Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. <clears throat> Um, just to be clear, you are talking about me, are you? Certainly I am. Do you see another in this cabin who fits the bill? A Russian assassin with 16 victims to his name? I don't even see one person who fits the bill. So it's true. It was you who did this to Kazuma-sama. What? And, and you're plotting a revolution too! It's shameful behavior, Naruhoda-san. Absolutely wicked. No. Listen, there's no way I- Hiya! Uh, this is I feel like this is gonna get old real quick. I am already sick of this. Now explain yourself. Tell me everything. This is ridiculous. How could you do it? For pity's sake, open your eyes! I'm not a Russian revolutionary, obviously! Oh, forgive me. 
And as for you, what kind of deduction was that? You were just saying the first thing that came into your head. Ah, but was I not right? Whilst venturing towards foreign climes, you do find yourself in the most troubling predicament, do you not? Well, yes, maybe. Ha! There you have it, you see. What do you make of that, hmm? Well, to be honest... This ship is en route to England, and I'm in handcuffs at the scene of a murder. So, I'm not really sure you could call it deduction. It's more plain observation. Indeed, and observation, my dear boy, is the basis of all deduction. My method is founded upon the observation of trifles, you see. I announce my findings with a brassy certitude. And more often than not, I'm right. Uh, I don't think you introduced yourself. Ah, my apologies. How remiss of me. Kirby, posture check and dab. These characters didn't make very good impressions to me, to be honest. They started growing on me a bit though, so I hope I like them more. Um, Kazuma grew on me. I actually like Kazuma. I like um, Ryunosuke. I thought Susato was super cute, but now she's just starting to get annoying. And Holm seems just very silly. So let's see like if my opinions change. I am none other than the greatest detective of the century, known to men and women the world over. The inimit inimitable Herlock Sholmes. So, it's really you? The actual Herlock Sholmes? The very same. The inimit inimitable actual Herlock Sholmes. Do you know this man, susato -san? The most famous detective in the world? Not a san Of course I do. There's nobody who hasn't heard of him. What planet have I been living on then? We must ask him what he's deduced. He will have worked out the entire case already, I'm sure. No, he doesn't. Really? Why do I feel uneasy about this? Mm, Kazuma Majima. Oh wait, wrong series. Ha 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 This isn't, um... Whatchamacallit. This isn't, uh... Yakuza. They lighten up after a bit, so don't worry too much. Yeah, I feel like right now I don't like them because they keep thinking that I'm a murderer, and I'm clearly not. <laughs> great detective! So, you're a great detective, are you? Sorry, what was your name again? Indeed, I am none other than the one and only Herlock Scholz. Oh, I see. You're German? Herlock, was it? <laughs> no, no, I have no her. I mean, I have hair. Please, call me Scholz. You can read all about my exploits at this exciting London publication. Oh yes, France Magazine, full of wonderful short stories and interesting articles from Great Britain. I never miss an issue, I have it sent from England especially. Ah yes, here it is, The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. So you're the protagonist in a series of short stories then? <laughs> Indeed I am. And you've read so many of your own stories, you start to think you really are a detective. Make no mistake, I'm not the poor deluded fellow you take me for. Your inference is backward. Backward? My trusty biographer records my greatest detecting achievements and chronicles them in the magazine. You have a biographer, do you? Doesn't everyone? Mine goes by the name of Dr. Wilson, presently keeping shop in London. Dr. Wilson? I must say, thanks to that publication, I've been fantastically busy of late. Why, this very moment, I am returning from Asia, having solved the mystery of a cursed royal crown. Really? I can't work out whether I should take this man seriously or not. Deduction, you see, is to me a science. Logical reasoning in its purest form. A science? Really? The astute observer notices even the most subtle of the reactions in the subject. A furtive glance, a twitch of a muscle, a slight inclination of the posture. Fingernails, arm sleeves, furrows in the skin, all these things are data. Right. <laughs> and a trained logician makes deductions from this data in the blink of an eye. The ultimate conclusion is, without fail, the truth. As I demonstrated only a few short moments ago. How can he look me in the eye and claim that? So you see, I have a term both for observation and for deduction, and fame. That is what makes me the one and only Her- No. Herlock Scholz. Oh, I should have said Er, like, in German, but whatever. Uh, 
Yakuza streams one day? Ah, I don't think so. I, I have such a backlog of other games, I don't think I'll ever get to Yakuza. That and I think the game is kind of shoving their introduction in your face, true. And they kind of make them over the top at first. And for the rest of the game, they're just always over the top. Herlock Sholmes and the Dancing Woman. <laughs> DDR streams? Oh man, I wish I could do DDR streams. Like, I have my DDR pad from PlayStation 2 days, but I think it's been so long it doesn't work anymore. Danganronpa on stream someday? Heck yes, Danganronpa stream. I gotta get to it after... After Dragon Quest Persona 5 Strikers and, um... And uh, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Also, hey Rigo, how you doing? Thanks for joining, happy Tuesday! DDR stream, what? <laughs> Nocturne? Yeah, gotta do Nocturne after Dragon Quest and, um, Persona 5 Strikers. Fancy toast. Cosmo's death. Have you managed to deduce anything about this particular case yet? Have I managed to deduce anything, my dear fellow? Who do you suppose discovered the culprit in his most cunning hiding place? That's right. It was none other than the great detective before you now, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Ah, I see. In other words. I'm in these now because of him. I'd pay to see you and come and do Danganronpa. I mean, I will get to it eventually, it's just how long will it take me? When I became anxious about Cosmo-sama this morning, I summoned all of the crew members to force the cabin door open. And I concealed myself among their number, getting entry to the scene of crime. Yes, luckily for everyone, the great detective, Erlach Sholmes, was on board. And the handcuffs seemed to be an excellent fit, Mr. Naruhodo. Ah. <sighs> The very moment I laid eyes on the scene, two facts were immediately apparent to me. Oh really? Two facts, you say? Ooh, two facts. Mr. Sholmes, tell us, please. What two facts were apparent to you when you came into this cabin this morning? Ah, uh, yes, but first let us be precise. The two facts in question were immediately apparent to me. Yes, yes, I understand, but what were they? Allow me to elucidate. The two facts that I deduced from a mere momentary glance at the scene of the crime were as follows. Number one, the cabin was locked from within, rendering escape of the culprit out of the question. Number two, the victim was Russian and killed following a dispute with an acquaintance. Hold on, Mr. Sholmes, what made you think the victim was Russian? Observe the dying message left by the victim on the floor. That is Russian word for wardrobe. Do, do you really think Kazuma-sama could have left a dying message in Russian? In the final moments, many find their native tongue filling their head. For this young man, Russian. Kazuma was Russian, was he? Initially, I considered Gardrob may be the name of the killer. A certain Robert Gard, perhaps. But in the interest of thoroughness, I decided it would be wrong not to look inside the wardrobe there, at least. Where you found Mr. Naruhodo sleeping soundly. Quite so. I found you, the renowned Russian revolutionary killer. Why is it that I am a Russian, too? I observed that you were wearing the same attire as the victim. In other words, you were acquainted. And if my memory serves, that outfit is a traditional dress of the Russian people. Our school uniforms are the traditional dress of Russian people? I... I had no idea. And I had no idea a detective could get something so wrong. I took a photograph of the victim and the message, and I might analyze it for possible hidden details. Kazuma, no. <laughs> This... This was taken immediately after the young man was discovered before the body was removed. Yes, Cosmo had already been taken away when I woke up. This is the first time I've actually seen him like this. Cosmo! Good thing he wasn't German. Ha ha ha. It's all the Russians. They hacked the election. <gasps> also, I thought they were banned from the Olympics, but they're still there, so... I don't know. Are you alright, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, um, yes. Thank you. The photograph of the crime scene has been entered into the court record. Russian word for wardrobe and purple ink. It would appear to have been written in the victim's final moments. 
Man, now who's going to take care of the useless goddess? Do -do -do. Can I ask you something, Mr. Scholes? What, pray? You mentioned Russia before as well, didn't you? You know, when you said I was a fearsome revolutionary fleeing from Russia and all of that? Ah, yes, the train of reasoning that led me to the truth. Would you mind explaining that train of reasoning to me, do you think? I can't read that. Certainly, if it interests you. How many times? I'm not Russian and I don't speak Russian. You already that shit just now. Um, can we talk about your deduction before? The things you concluded about me, I mean. Ah, the now famously accurate troubling predicament you find yourself in. Actually, it was the other details I was more hoping to discuss. You know, the merciless Russian revolutionary and assassin of 16 part? Ah oh, yes, the more sordid details. It was a fairly commonplace deduction. Here we have this morning's paper. The main he headline reads... Whoa! Revolutionary Villain Bolshevik. <laughs> oh my god! Villain Bolshevik. Wow! Villain Bolshevik. Flees Russia via Shanghai. Russia toast brushing up on that Russian language. I don't know Russian. This vessel made a port call at Shanghai yesterday, and last night the young Russian was murdered. Since when was Kazuma a Russian? It sounds like Mr. Scholz concluded he was Russian because of what Kazuma Sama wrote on the floor. It was a simple act of reasoning to realize that the culprit of this crime was the same merciless revolutionary. One who would kill the very man who helped him to escape after his true identity was discovered. Yes, you, villain Borshevik. No, 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 how could it be me? I don't look anything like this man, just look at his face! Well, you are a fearsome revolutionary after all. Therefore, you have no doubt learned to revolutionize your appearance as well. Ugh, please. And, I might add, your name does not appear on the ship's passenger list. Need I say more? Well, that's because I'm a stowaway. What about the other details? The 16 victims of assassination and blowing up the Crystal Tower. Ah, uh, yes. The journalist clearly interviewed the man and printed all those particulars in the article. The deeds the man has perpetrated thus far and those he is plotting. Yes, everything about this revolutionary Bolshevik was included. There can be no mistake. That was a pun. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Reason I said good thing he wasn't German was because wardrobe in German is regal. Is it? I don't remember. Uh, Translate.google.com English to German, German, German. Wardrobe. No, no, it's Schrank, Kleiderschrank, Garderobe, Schrank, Kleiderkammer, Costume. Huh, what if we do it the other way around? Schrank, nope. Uh, do revolutionaries usually agree to interviews with newspaper reporters, I wonder? And what about the part where you said I was just returning from Afghanistan? Also quite clearly stated here in the article. Borshevik has recently returned after a period of subversive activities in a war-torn region of Afghanistan. Where even is it, anyway? This Afghanistan place. Here, take the paper for yourself, as a little memento of this great deduction. Oh, um, thank you. I've absorbed all of it in- I've absorbed all that is of interest to me within its pages, but I see no rubbish bin nearby. Oops, I forgot to speak it in English accent, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you may find the article on the back page of interest as well. On the back? Cast your eye over it sometime if the interest takes you, though you may need someone to interpret. It's all written in Russian. I couldn't hope to read it. But I suppose it wouldn't hurt to glance at the article. Maybe there might be a picture or two. Then let me check the court record, examine... Oh, hello, it's a pretty girl! Hmm, this is interesting. Have you found something relevant, Naruhuda-san? Well, no, I... I mean, it looks like it might be interesting. I can't read a single word, I'm afraid. No, nor can I. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, do you think? 
She is very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? I... I don't know. I can't make any sense of it. Ah, I'm glad you've noticed this article. Ah! Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. Oh, thank you. He pops up everywhere, does Mr. Sholmes. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the famous dancer was reported missing. Missing. Ah. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. <laughs> Pavlova, like Pavlov? Oh, well, it's not exactly wardrobe, but shelves. Oh, okay. Jelly laughing like, hee hee, classic jelly giggle. <laughs> is it? Why are Russian names so hard to remember? It would appear that the woman was in costume when she was found to be missing from her dressing room. Wearing the diamond tiara you pi see pictured, which is worth some 20,000 rubles. Oh, how much is 20,000 rubles? I have no idea, but I'm quite sure it must be an unbelievable sum of money. Susato-san's Susato eyes are shining like diamonds themselves. The tiara is the property of the Novovich Ballet. It would seem the director is beside herself with worry. Yes, I'm not surprised. The company is most anxious to recover both Miss Pavlova and the valuable tiara. They requested international assistance at all ports with sailings to Great Britain. Could this be another case of a Russian fleeing his or her country? It does seem to be the Russian thing to do. I'm not even going to dignify that with a response, Mr. Naruhodo. Article... I bet it was her that's on the boat that killed Kazuma to be like, whoopsies, you discovered me, now I'm gonna go. Uh, okay, anyways, let's keep talking to him. Before we started talking, you were examining Kazuma's desk, weren't you? Kazuma? Ah, yes, the victim. Did you notice anything useful? Anything at all? Observe for a moment the desktop of the victim. We see that oh, Kasuma's theme song. Oh. We see that the victim was engaged in petting some text. London Diary. Kasuma's keeping notes of the trip. Ah, but I don't think you should read his private writings. It could upset people. Tragic, and something you ought to perhaps elucidate before the act of reading. You, you mean you've read it already? It is my business to know of what other people do not. Yes, believe it or not, I know a smattering of Japanese. Oh, I see. Well, you're about to know what Susan's takedown is. Susan, aren't you going to throw the detective with one of your trademark ta takedowns? I'm sorry, Nanohoto-san. What on earth do you mean? Life is so unfair. Anyway, to return to the matter at hand, namely this diary belonging to the victim. It would appear the final sentence is incomplete, as if the author were cut short. Tell me, what is the nature of the writing? Pray be, blah, pray be precise as to the details. Oh, but I thought you knew Japanese. A smattering, dear boy, a smattering. Sayonara, bonsai, mikado. Naru, nado, nado. I trust you're insuitably impressed. <sighs> but this diary is littered with complicated-looking characters, of which I can read precisely none. <laughs> so what was all that showing off about before then? He's so weird. If you'd be so kind as to show me, I would happy to read it to you, Mr. Sholmes. And yet you prevented me from meeting- Susato! I'm much obliged, my dear madam. The final entry here in Kazuma Sama's diary consists of just two short sentences. The first reads 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. A whistling sound? Hmm, these are very deep waters. Pray, go on. Pasta check. Ugh. The second sentence reads 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of great speckled band Wait, what looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? What on earth does that mean? I have no idea. I've never heard that expression before. Hmm, the ventilator grill, you say? The man was presumably referring... to the lattice there on the wall, which connects to the adjoining cabin. 
Yes, the adjoining cabin. Cosmos Dio has been entered into the court record. So, I believe I've given you enough to consider for the time being, at least. Actually, let me double check this. I can hear a faint whistling sound. Uh, okay, so that's all it says. It's just that one page. Um, will they say anything else about this or no? I'm afraid I can't read a word of Russian. No, me neither. I have no idea what this says. A pair of you floundering is a sorry sight. Allow me to offer some assistance. The article on the front page of this newspaper is concerned with the fearsome Russian revolutionary. It reads, Revolutionary villain Bolshe Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. Yes, you told us that before. It reveals also that those who's, who see the man's beard with their own eyes never live to tell the tale. Oh my goodness, he is fearsome. Well, presumably the newspaper photographer was alright, wasn't he? The solution is obvious, of course. If he despises his beard to that degree, he need only shave it off. I'm quite... I missed it, but I don't think it's important. Okay. Um, Who do we got for people? Ah, uh, Kazuma! Oh, Susetto's only 16. Wow, she's young. She's like seven years younger than us. And Herlock Holmes is 34. Okay. Ah, do you have somewhere to go? As it happens, the victims writing in his diary have piqued my interest. The matter warrants further investigation, I believe. And if I am still too long, the seasickness takes hold. <laughs> Oh, I suppose. You're thinking of investigating the cabin next door, which the ventilator connects to? Great detectives are a curious breed. Our minds rebel at stagnation. We crave mental exaltation. So yes, I intend to investigate. Hence the truth will become clear soon enough. Do you think, perhaps, that we could go with you? Hmm... No, that would be somewhat complicated. What? But why? A simple glance at your wrist would reveal the answer. Oh, these. After all, you're the prime suspect in this matter, no? There's no point trying to turn it into a question. You're the one who decided I was the culprit in the first place. Whatever do you mean? I have no recollection of naming you as the culprit at any point. But you took me out of the wardrobe and- You must be joking! You! You just said it! Only a moment ago! Dear me, you are clearly misguided. I would have no cause to say such a thing. Well, actually, Mr. Sholmes, I did hear you say that too. You're quite sure? Well, that's very strange. I wouldn't have said you at the face of a criminal, you know? Not really. So what? Were you looking at my knees before? Some great detective you are. Well, anyway, that was then, and this is now. What do you mean? What I mean, sir, is this. If you are the culprit, then you must play the part more convincingly. Roll over and accept your fate. <laughs> now he's just being plain rude. And off he goes, having just laughed in my face. His sense of humor is as twisted as his name. Naruhura-san, what are you just standing there for? Hmm? We must go and investigate the cabin neck. Oops, I missed it. What did she say? What did she say? What are you guys saying? After Kazuma-sama spent his dying moment struggling to leave us a clue, you willing to give up? You- Okay, she said we must go and investigate the cabin next door as well. Aren't you forgetting something? What about these? There's no way I can... You're just going to roll over and accept your fate? Ugh. As if you gave me any choice in the rolling over part. <laughs> virtual hugs, thank you! Posture check, virtual hugs, thank you! I think we still have some investigation to finish off in here first, don't we? Let's carry on examining what we can in this cabin while we wait for a chance to slip next door. Good idea. The situation doesn't look good for me, but there are still things I can do to help myself. And I owe it to Kazuma to do everything I can to find a way out of this and bring the real culprit to justice. Is that... Uh, oh wait! Is something wrong, Garuhara-san? 
Oh, no, it's just that crewman standing by the door. I can't help feeling like I've seen him somewhere before. Oh, yes, you're right. He does look familiar. Excuse me, sir. Yes, what can I do for you? It's... <laughs> oh, it's what's-his-face. I recognize that face, but, but it can't be. <laughs> it is. I, I didn't know you were here, Inspector Hosonaga. This made me laugh. <laughs> I didn't know he would be here. Hello again. What are you doing here? I think that should be my line. I was so stunned when I saw you, my heart stopped. Nearly stopped, I hope. I received some special orders to go undercover as a member of the crew and board the ship. Again? <laughs> you certainly seem to enjoy undercover work, Inspector. If there's anything I could do to help you, please ask. I never expected to see this man on board, but perhaps his presence can help me out of this hopeless situation. Uh, converse? Special orders. So what are your special orders this time, Inspector? Yes, and why are you dressed as a member of the crew? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hmm? This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. For what? <laughs> my orders were to act as Asuki-san's bodyguard. <gasps> and you failed him! It was the Minister of Justice Jikoku who pushed for this... Jigoku? Who pushed for this overseas study to go tour ahead... Study tour to go ahead. Jigoku? Doesn't Jigoku mean hell? And he entrusted me with ensuring that Asuki-san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. Assassinated? How could that even be a pus- Blah! How could that even have been a possibility? Why can't I read tonight? I'm not sure. But these are complicated times. There are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Minister Jigoku said we should be prepared for all eventualities. This is incredible. I, I don't believe it. Kazuma-sama was assassinated? Obviously, we couldn't give Asugi-san a visible security escort. Which is why I'm undercover now, posing as one of the crew. I see. And I didn't take my eyes off him the entire time we've been on board, from morning until night, every day. But I never imagined it would happen here, inside his own cabin. Not here on the first-class deck. I failed miserably at my assignment, and Asuki-san is dead as a result. I'm a disgrace! All I can do is humbly apologize. Inspector... So if there's anything at all that I can do to help now, just say the word. Permission to investigate. We're doing what we can to investigate Cosmo's death ourselves. I thought you might be. You didn't do it, did you? You're not the killer? Of course not! We'd really like to investigate the cabin next door. Yes, so we need to be allowed out of this cabin. I'm sorry. What? You've been deemed a risk to the ship's, ship's safety. If you move to even touch the handle of the cabin door. That stormy looking seaman would, sur would surely snap your neck in two. I suppose. I'm not just a stowaway any now. They think I'm a murderer as well. Would it be possible to give me something to work with, do you think? I'm going to need something persuasive. What do you mean? If I had a solid reason why the next door cabin should be investigated, for example, I'd do everything I could to persuade the captain to allow it. Really, I'd lay my life on the line if I had to. But I don't see how... The diary! There may be a way. What? Really? Think of how you tried to persuade me of your innocence, Naruhoto-san. By presenting me with a piece of evidence that you already had in your possession. Evidence? It's just the same as when you were in court. You must have done it many times during your trial. Simply select present panel, and choose the some evidence that Inspector Hosonaga could use. So, evidence that would give us a viable reason to investigate the next door cabin, is it? 
All right, yes. I, I think I might know what we can use. Let's see if I can present a detective with the evidence he needs to persuade the captain. Evidence, 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 blah, 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 blah. Oh, is it not? Do I have to talk to him? What? Oh, I just have to do present. Psh. It's not presenting! Oh, I have to press X. Duh. What's that? It's Cosma's diary. Just before he died, Cosma sama wrote something rather strange in his diary. Strange? In what way? He wrote, what looks like some kind of speckled band is ah, dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? That is strange. Yes, we're still trying to work out what he meant by that, but what I'd like to know is... Don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? You're very astute, Inspector. That ventilator clearly joins to the next door cabin. That's right. So if we could investigate in there, we might be able to work out what the speckled band was. Alright then. I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given me strict orders to guard the scene of the crime, you see. I'll have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? You're willing to do that? Yes, as long as you don't leave the first class cabin area. I'm afraid I can't remove those handcuffs, though. But... What about the captain? Aren't you going against his direct orders? I'm a man of my word. And I promise you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it takes to convince the captain. After all, I failed to keep Asuki-san safe. This is the least I can do. Thank you. Let's seize the moment then, Naruhoto-san. Just select move and we can leave this cabin at last. Move? Alright, let's see what we can find out. First class passageway. Night, January 748. Blah, blah, blah. There's a mouse trap. Ooh, I'm finally out of that cabin. I have to admit, this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be, and this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed. Cosmos was being sent on the study, abroad study tour by the government. That's why he was being put up in a first-class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steerage. Really? That must be awful. Oh, look over there. There's another crewman keeping watch, and he looks enormous, even if he is sitting down. Wow, look at that man spreading. Damn. Close your legs, dude. The door next to him leads to the second-class accommodation. I suppose he's making sure that no one comes in here who shouldn't. I suppose... Like people in handcuffs? Naruhoto-san, you look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. I would have thought you'd be used to be ship... You'd be used to the ship by now. We've been at sea for two weeks already. Well, yes, I know, but the thing is... I was inside Kazuma's trunk when I first came aboard. And ever since then, I've been shut up inside that little wardrobe. It must have been a very trying time for you. Please, don't give me that pitying look. He looks enormous even when sitting down. That's what she is at. Ah! Nice! Okay, the map. This looks like a plan of the SS Burya. It shows each death. Look. The Burya is a large-scale steamship with a triple-skin hull. What a marvel of engineering. Well, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but... How is it that such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? Oh, that's really quite simple, Naruhoto-san. It is? Well, consider the Japanese archipelago. The islands of Japan? Yes, they're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth, many, many times larger than the ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. Well, I suppose so. I mean, I guess back then that's how they thought of it. This lamp is out. Is that suspicious? Virtual hugs, thank you! That's a huge book on top of the table there, and there's a pen next to it. Yes, that looks like the ship's log. Shall we have a little look through it? The writing is so neat and precise. Every detail about the voyage has been meticulously recorded. 
Hmm, you wouldn't expect a rough and steady ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. And nothing. No reaction at all. I thought he might appreciate the compliment. I'm not sure that rough and ready is much of a compliment, Naruhodo-san, even to a sailor. Anyway, last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there was nothing to report. Oh my gosh, so many virtual hugs and posture checks. Thank you guys. Oh my gosh, a hydrate. Whoa, Kirby. Breaking out the big points. Oh, it was about time for me to hydrate anyway. Whew. Uh, can I talk to the sailor? Um, excuse me, but could I ask you for something? You? You little stowaway murderer! That wasn't a good start, was it? Alright, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask something of you? You? You little third class ladies maid? Oh, she's not a ladies maid! And she's in third class? Aww. Oh. We seem to have caught the sailor on a bad day, Susoto-san. I am not sailor. My mother gave me name. Also, why do you have, like, burn marks on your face? That's pretty suspicious. I am senior crewman. Beef stroganoff. <laughs> Beef stroganoff! It's a soup! No, wait. Is it a soup or is it, like, a meat dish? But anyway, beef stroganoff. Phew. The best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. First class cabin area. Um, Mr. Stroganoff, about this first class cabin area. Here we are in the finest part of Burya Steamship for very important reasons. Persons, oops. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret. Many important persons. That is why I am always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But somehow I let stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in ocean, but Stroganoff is not animal. Thank you. If I may, I was wondering, is the cabin next to Mr. Asogi is currently occupied? Ha! What? <laughs> um, Susato-san, did you understand that? It sounded like, da. I think it's probably Russian for yes, or no. Genius. It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Well, it sounds like there is somebody in the next door cabin, at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. Passenger in the next door cabin! It's a soup? So it is a soup! I was... <laughs> excuse me, I was right. Could you tell us who's traveling in a cabin next to Mr. Asogis? Wait, how old is Beef Stroganoff? Okay, Hosonaga Beef Stroganoff. 37! Real wall of a man, a senior member of the Russian crew who's in charge of security around first class cabins. <laughs> His name is Mr. Grimsby Roylot. He is very important Western German gentleman. Grimsby Roylot. Grim. Grims. Grimsby Roylot? Roylot. Be Roylot. I'm trying to guess what pun his name is. Stroganoff is a wrestling move. <laughs> How old is Beef Stroganoff? Dang, seven dirt. That soup must spell really bad right now. Ew! What would Grimsby Roylot? Grimsby Roylot. Grims. Grimsby Roy I, I can't think of the pun. It's killing me. A Western gentleman. Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roylot is authentic Western gentleman. Such a man would not have, in have no interest in lowly student from insignificant Far East Islands. That was harsh. Could you tell us when Mr. Roylock came aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks now and I've been in Cosmos Cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from next door cabin or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins, he must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. Mm -hmm. Last night. Um, are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganoff? 
Da, all time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is- oops, uh, what'd you say? Uh, it is sad about student boy. Were you on watch light night? Were you on watch last night as well? Of course, but why are you hesitating? It's nice to watch this after having finished this chapter today since I know everything that happened. Ah! Uh, I, I feel like I barely scratched the surface about this case. Oh. And did you notice anything at that time? Anything unusual? What? Um, Susata-san, did you understand that? It was clearly a... No! I saw nothing unusual. Nothing at all. And you didn't hear anything str strange noises? Or sense anything was wrong in some way? I said... No! He looked away. The other crewman looked away. Something is fishy. Sorry! I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for a moment there. This is enough. I cannot say more now. Oh. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to Cabin. Yes, alright. No, I still have examining to do. Bulkhead to second class area is staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain. Or, as English say, when pigs fly. Yes, I understand. Teasy toasty. Subpoena him. <laughs> Good, now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. Examine! That's the way to the second class area of the ship. Is something wrong? I was thinking about making a run for it, just for a moment. Things aren't exactly going well for me. I might be wrong, but imagine the moment you reach for the handle of the door. That burly seaman would surely shoot you dead. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Perhaps I went a little too far there. No, I started with my talk of running away. And there's no way I could run away while Kazuma's death remains a mystery anyway. And while you're still handcuffed, because once you leave the ship, who's going to uncuff you? Okay, well, let's examine this clearly obvious cheese trap. Ah, a trap for catching mice. Yes, we have plenty of those back home in Japan. Although they seem to be using a lump of chalk or something as bait. Let me see. Yes, I think that's what is called cheese. It's made from the milk of cows. Cheese? I wonder what it, that tastes like. You can't eat it, Naruhoda-san. The trap will shut on your fingers. Really? But... I suppose you're right. You weren't actually going to try it, were you? All I've had to eat for the past couple of weeks is Kazuma's leftovers. You don't know how hungry I've been in that wardrobe. Poor you. I'll find a little snack for you later. Yo, I want some chocolate milk. Semen would shoot you down. <laughs> wow, that does sound very wrong. <laughs> What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? That's the emergency alarm. It's probably best not to touch it. Oh, an alarm. It says, press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship, and it brings the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, this I have to see. What are you doing, Naruto-san? You mustn't touch it! But this is an emergency situation! Just look at these handcuffs! You know full well that's not what the alarm is for. If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be even in a wor even worse situation. Uh, I wish everything would just stop. The ship included. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. When Jelly said semen, I was tempted to comment on that, but refrained. No, make all the comments, dudes. I think that's why they purposely, like, called them semen instead of sailor or whatever. Press the button again. <laughs> Maybe I should. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma-sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. Oh, I'm already going in. Whoops. 
Knock, knock. No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. Ah! <gasps> what was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream. It must have been a woman. Stand aside. I'm about to break the door down. Mr. Sholmes! I shan't be stopped. When it, the fit is on me... Wait, what? When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking doors off their hinges. Please, wait, Mr. Sholmes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't? Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What prey can I kick? <laughs> this guy's so ridiculous. Jelly semen. Happy jelly. Oh my gosh, no. I I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress relief. Yeah, yeah. Whoa! Who, who are you? A Western gentleman? This man looks Russian to me. We, we heard a woman scream. A woman? Don't be absurd. As you can see, there's nobody in but me in this cabin. True, this old man does appear to be the only person in here. But in that case... Who just screamed? Get out, all of you! Now! Please excuse the intrusion, but you're Mr. Grimsby Roylott, I believe. Yes, that's me. And you are? I'm the one and only, the actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. Don't lie, you see Eric, Jelly gets happy. Of course I do, Eric is freaking gorgeous. That's why I can't wait to go back to Dragon Quest so I can see Eric again. I'm a great detective among great detectives, one who adorns the covers of popular magazines, no less. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. The man uses that magazine like a business card. A detective? Hmm, I do not trust detectives. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So might I be so bold as to ask where you opened that small traveling case? Wait, right, to ask you to open that traveling case. What? Don't be stupid! How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk? Don't look at me. Oh my... Did you see that, Mr. Naruhuro? Yes, the case just shook. Leave now, otherwise I'll call the steward. So this is Kazuma's neighbor, Mr. Grimsby Rollot. There's no doubt about it, the strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find some clues before that burly sailor returns. So we just gonna examine? Sholmes, what are you doing? Um, do you have a moment, please, Mr. Sholmes? You need only address me as Sholmes. That's what I just did, isn't it? <laughs> well, um, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing there? Why, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed, I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. Oh, and it would seem that the hours is a problem now. The time has come. No, I don't need you. Am I mistaken? Well, um, no, actually. You're spot on for once. Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Royla, is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why? The truth, of course. Though it is, though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he got so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Oh, yes, please. Well then, what you are about to see may very well astound you. For I am about to apply my great detective's greatly and my great deduction to the case. Examine. Ha ha ha. 
Could this man be a more hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? I don't think this is Roylot, because the picture from the newspaper, um... Oh no, wait, that's Bols... That's Bolshevik. This is... Yeah, okay. Never mind. I was gonna be like, this is a woman dressed up as, um... Bol Bolshevik, but it's not. From time to time, it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness, or Russian on account of his dubiousness? What the heck does that mean? I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you, or anyone. That's right, and Mr. Sholmes? I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but what? But I once read... It is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shh, I must have complete silence. What are you doing? Why are you peering at my face like that? Ah, just as I thought. Yes, I've quite made up my mind now. Hmm? There can be no other explanation that accommodates all these facts. Mr. Roylott, I have reached two incontro incontrovertible conclusions. What, what do you mean? Number one, your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? Huh? And number two, the other conclusion I have drawn, you are, at this very moment no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you have been discovered. Does it not? Ugh. Oh, that what is on. I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Shaw's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction? Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What? What ineffable twaddle! Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the colors drain from Mr. Rolas' face. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Sholmes' conclusions were right. How how could you How could I possibly know such things, you wish to say? Very well then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I cordially invite you to upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. The great deduction. The game is afoot. What the heck? Topic one. Old man's identity. So the dubious looking Russian Mr. Roylot obviously what catches the eye in the first place. Is the enormous pair of shears in your hand? Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. He had a- what? That was wrong. Now, moving on. The question that is then begged is this, why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylott? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper, in particular the fascinating front page article. Which you appear you have read also, Mr. Roylott. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. In translation, the headline reads Revolutionary Villain Borshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses an extremely copious beard. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the face of revolution Russian revolutionary himself, Villain Borshevik. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand. A revolutionary on the run. 
Is this all right? Wrongdoing. Now as for my second deduction. You are at this very moment on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime? Over there. Oh yes, Mr. Roylott. Take it unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Ah! Uh, and I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies in the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. It is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse. What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation... A young lady, perhaps. One slight enough to fit in there. There's no one's gonna fit in there, dude. Don't be absurd. And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless could do chase you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can be equally found in the pages of this newspaper. For there is another most stimulating article. If we turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova. Conclusion, kidnapping of a young ballerina. Is this all right? I feel like it's wrong. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this Russian enigma. Elementsky! I can't tell if the ballerina's name is a pun or not. Well, Pavlova is the female reading of Pavlov. So, like, Pavlov's, um, experiment. Was the name of the dude, like, Nikolai Pavlov? Oh yeah, some of this is wrong. It feels wrong, especially because the character was like, huh, what are you talking about? So what you're saying is, the name rings a bell. <laughs> That's so great. Also, hey, Groan, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Susan, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Sholm's brilliant deductions, you know? But that did seem a little different somehow. Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes, could you come over here a moment? Pray, what can I do for you? It's about your deductions. Would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, there's a newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. Ah, oh, yes, I recall a discussion earlier, and at that time, I believe I told you that the man is a revolutionary, well able to revolutionize his own appearance. In fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Roulette does look more like this man than you do. That's not the point. <laughs> and another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance, it is too small, clearly! You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child into that case, even if you pushed really hard! I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady is 15! No, I didn't know, how could I? Hmm, well, if she's 15, then 10 years worth of her would be poking out from the case. Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain lightness in their bodies. Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it would surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of that small case. Oh dear, you might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Sholmes. Ugh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. It is too small, clearly. That's what she said. Oh, Vinegar tastes very... Sometimes vinegar could be good, in little amounts. 
Mr. Naruhoro, something's occurred to me about Mr. Shulm's deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes cut to the heart of the matter almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and his logic that seem a little off. Your idea of a little may be a little off itself, Miss Susato. It's just one or two key words in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Hmm, switch some key words in his deductions. Yes, but very tactfully. I feel sure if we could do that, we'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Sholm's great deduction. Precisely the thought that was going through my own mind. This man is going. This man is a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. Ah ha ha ha! Uh, it's not that funny. Ah, oh, and you, my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists? Whoa! Where'd the handcuffs go? Ah! Where are your handcuffs? Huh? H how did. I thought they may hinder your ability to follow me in our dance of deduction. I don't believe it! Mr. Sholmes, you are a Marvel! Marvel Cinematic Universe! <laughs> and don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrist when we are finished. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. This man is a lot of work. That's what she said. <laughs> Course correction! Hold it, Mr. Scholz! I feel... Okay, then maybe this really... My original thought was, this is the ballerina girl. And she dressed up like him. And she's trying to cut up the newspaper to get rid of like what her original ballerina face is. The baby is obvious what catches the eye in the first place. This she is. Now we ask ourselves, what can you possibly want with an element? And so of course it's staring us in the face. You are on the verge of the copious beer just bought. Nope. Hmm, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roylot, either. Which means, I suppose, that deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a key word here, Nadohoro-san, and see if it helps matters. All right, but how? I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Roylot. That's what she said. I wonder if it's really his beard that he intended to use those shears on. Exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Sholm's deductions better, then what? Then I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, Nadohoro-san. Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around to that last sentence. What exactly was Mr. Roylat really going to use those Sonora shears for? Oh! Hair! Golden locks. It is a ballerina. <laughs> this is so cool! You're on the verge of using those shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. Indeed, you have identified the precise detail I was intended to expose. Such less golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman. And judging from the length and sheen of your hair, one still very much in her youth. Oh no. If only I'd managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. The question then begged is this, why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent locks? Once again the answer is plain, we have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea the old man was really a young woman in disguise, did you? What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise, Naruhoro-san. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing the facts with Mr. Sholmes. Is that what they call it these days? Deducing the facts? I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm, I'm not having fun or anything. This is strictly business, not strictly... <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part of Mr. Sholmes' deduction, shall we? The evidence that he's picked out doesn't fit the facts at all now. No, that's true, given that Mr. Roylat is actually a woman. 
Exactly. He, or rather she, can't possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole has taken a different turn direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else. Something that, uh, whatever. For some reason, this woman needed to try to hide her true identity. I feel as though I've either read or heard about a young woman in a situation like that recently. All right, I'll do my best. Ballerina! The presentation in these parts is so overly fancy, but I love it. I know, I'm loving it too. The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. I didn't look at the back of the article before this, so I got a little stuck. I always examine everything as soon as I possibly can. That's right, you've hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. It would appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of the Novovich ba Ballet's prima ballerina... Miss Nikolina Pavlova. Ah! Da 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 Dang! All of a sudden she has boobs! <laughs> You're right. My real name is Nina. I mean, Nikolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone! A ballerina on the run. Da da da! That doesn't look dangerous at all. She's lucky it was a tall hat. Booba! Nicolina Bublova. <laughs> now as for my second deduction, I mean second conclusion. You are at this very moment on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime over there. Oh yes, Miss Pavlova. Take it in away as people have a eyes are uh, eyes are surer than a mouth. Get it, Nicolina? No. <laughs> the answer we seek lies there in the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. This woman is the ballerina and she's right in front of our eyes. So clearly she can't be inside that traveling case as well. No, that's right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? Uh, I can see I'm going to have to take that step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. Ahem, my eyes are up here. Where are your eyes straying to? <laughs> eyes are truer than the mouth. <laughs> you seem to look pleased, Naruhoto-san. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sholmes? Oh, he likes dancing. Stop it. Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Uh... But the... It clearly was shaking, but it's not the traveling case. Wait, can I examine it? It's a very small case, isn't it? You can see instantly that no person could possibly fit inside there. So does that tell us that Miss Pavlova's telling glance in this direction was focused on something else? If that's true, though, it doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? Well, if there's nothing incriminating inside this case, why did she refuse to let us look inside? Yes, I wonder why. Perhaps she has a perfectly harmless reason, though. Am I missing something? It has to be the traveling case, because nothing else is lighting up. So it's not just the case, then it's probably something inside. This is the only thing I could present. Nope, it was wrong! It was wrong! No, I was wrong! One moment, a bearded Russian gentleman, the next, a sweet prima ballerina. But your true identity is that of a master thief, and this whole case of yours is filled with loot. Are you quite concentrating? Uh, you've identified exactly what I did originally. Oh, yes, so I have, sorry. Well, I do understand, as, inimit as inimitable as I am, people do like to try. But you won't make a great detective like that, not even a great detective's assistant. Is there something? No, there's nothing I'm missing. An assistant's assistant, then? Alright, I'll think again. Oh, it makes me so mad that I, I missed the point. Oh, gosh. 
Crimes come in so many different forms. That's the thing. How can we, we be sure? Mr. Schwab's observational skills are beyond question, Adahora-san. Miss Pavlova definitely let her eyes stray to something, and that something will explain everything. You must look around very carefully and try to work out what she was looking at. Alright, I'll investigate the area more thoroughly. I agree that there must be something here that will prove what this woman is really guilty of. I like how they have specific dialogue for these wrong options. Yeah, as opposed to just like, oh, you're just wrong. Chair. Light. Like, nothing else is lighting up, so... But is it meant to light up? Should I do the wine bottle? Wait, what? What? Something, something... Was it just travel case? Oh, I could turn the camera! I did not know that. Oh, dumb. Oops, oops, no, I didn't mean to talk. Uh. Wow, look at this dazzling tiara. I've never seen anything like it. Are those diamonds... Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, not a horizon. Try it on. What? Me? Isn't it usually girls who wear tiaras? Wouldn't you like to try it on? Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does this tiara look so familiar? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. Yeah, Tiara. I was wondering if I should tell you or not. Because <laughs> I'm like, why would it just be on this one screen? And I'm like, I accidentally tilted the right stick and I was like, oh wait, I can move it. The proof of your crime is surely this Tiara. Ah! I believe this Tiara was worn on stage by dancers in the Novovich Ballet, is it not? Indeed, it would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in the newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary, the crime you have committed is theft. Oh no! Yes, you left your ballet troupe unlawfully taking their precious tiara with you. I have no one, no family, no friends. I am all alone, and I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from, how do you say, an earl of Prussia. It belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old, and she's run away all by herself. She must have been extremely lonely. All right, I will tell you everything. There's no point to hiding it now. Come, come, let us not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? What, what do you mean? You have staunchly refused to open this traveling case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish it to be remain closed. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um... My dear girl, there's no sense in playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I have ever laid eyes on them. Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless could betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written on the books on the shelf. What? <laughs> He's completely changed tack with his induction now. I think Mr. Sholmes is adapting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe, but why has he suddenly brought the bookshelf into all this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case would have been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true, but still. Miss Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in that direction. I noticed it myself. Then there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. And it must be somewhere in the same area if that's where her gaze was involuntarily drawn. I agree, that's the only answer. Whatever she has hidden in that case should be revealed by following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. There's a cat in there? That's what I thought. Books on a shelf. Small picture. Rules of passage. Uh... I think 
it's this because they're like, you're not allowed to have stowaways. So she's hiding something. It's not that. Yes, I got it right. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. That's the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I... As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time. But no weapon or other dangerous item would move of its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova. Inside your traveling case... Is the last item listed as forbidden in the vessel's rules of passage. A pet. Ah! Cat, dog, lizard, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be a cat. Possession of a prohibited animal. Eric? Oh my gosh, I would love to have Eric in a case. Deduction complete. Elementary! Restore my health, please. Or don't. I want us to be Bezos. <laughs> he wasn't even alive then. So clearly, you aren't who you said you were. No, I am not Grimsby Roilat. My real name is Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Later that same night, you stole aboard this vessel. Which couldn't have been easy. The Burrier is a huge steamship with a vast crew. Could she really have snuck on board without being noticed? In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman. And you intended to sever all links with your past by severing your long hair. Yet to a woman, hair is no trifling matter. Why do they always think that? We don't care about the length of our hair. My personal recommendation is to leave it well alone. So, if it was just you back to cut off your own hair, who was it that let out the scream we heard from the outside the cabin? That veritable tinkling of a bell? Why, none other than this young lady, naturally. More like a full set of pipes, if you ask me. No healthy toast for you. What? Shave it all off. I don't have a good enough- I don't think I have a good enough head shape to shave it all off. Plus, I like- I get cold, so I like having a bit of cover on my neck. That's why I will never shave my hair. I'm looking forward to next toast featuring Baldy Toast. <gasps> I will never be bald! I was so scared when I ran away in Shanghai. I was sure they would come looking for me. That's why I decided to, how do you say, disgust myself? So no one would recognize me. As a result, you transformed yourself into that questionable old man? I see. I put on the fur hat and fake beard. Then just before you came in here, I saw in the newspaper. Right on the page, there was a picture of me. I was so frightened, I couldn't stop from screaming. I knew that if I didn't change my appearances completely, they would find me. So I decided to cut all my hair as fastly as possible. I picked up the scissors in my hand and... At that precise moment, we walked in through the door, annoyingly unlocked cabin door. Things happen like that sometimes, don't they? Things do indeed happen like that from time to time. Are those two even talking about the same thing? There's just one more thing I'd like to know. Wait, that's Susetta. Whoops. What exactly do you have inside your traveling case? You were right. It is my dear friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. Please, don't tell anyone. If the captain finds out, if you say any to any of the crew, your secret is safe with us, I assure you, but in return... You must tell us, in as much detail as you can muster, about the events of last night. Yes, alright, I will tell you. Aren't you going to let out your pet? It's gonna be like suffocating in there. Well, Mr. Naruhodo? Wasn't it something Mr. Sholmes' Wait, wasn't it something Mr. Sholmes' great deduction? It was certainly something, yes. 
I'm just not entirely sure what. But at least Miss Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Her pet must be stuffy toast. The cat is dead now. I feel like the cat is dead. I need a haircut. My hair goes below my eyes now. Oh, dang, that's long. Indeed, it is incredible. Ah, oh, and one more thing. Oh, yes? What? Observe your wrists. My... Uh... Ah! Your hands! are cuffed again! What? But how? True to my word, I have restored your shackles. Uh, when? And why? There's still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mr. Naruhodo. I'm sorry to say, it can't be helped at the moment. Ah, uh, can't it? Really? Anyway, let's listen to what Miss Pavlova has to say. I can't go on not knowing. I have to find out what the speckled Ben, what that Kazuma-sama wrote about in his diary really was. Oh, is it like, gonna be like the cat's collar? Can we let the cat out of the case now? Let me see. Don't touch! Huh? I will tell you what I know about last night, but please, you must not touch my things. I, how do you say, forbid it. Oh, sorry. As well you should be, young man. What vulgar manners you have. Poking around a young lady's private belongings? Neither shall I allow it. Ugh, hypocrite! Okay, fine, I'll talk to her. Schrodinger's cat. Is the cat alive or dead? It's alive and dead. Ooh. Jeff needs to live. <laughs> Wait, she can still be the killer. Yeah, she still can. Just because we found out she's the ballerina doesn't mean she's innocent. Panty raid? Ooh. What happened last night? Did you know that someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen told me this morning when I was eating breakfast. The man who died. He was a friend of mine. Oh, that's why we're trying to find out what happens. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you heard a strange noise, for example? Perhaps people talking? Perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest? Perhaps a steam engine exploded? What? Perhaps everyone on board would have noticed if that happened? Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. I'm sorry, but all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they would find me. I didn't notice anything that was happening around me. Oh, I see. Running away. You've run away from your ballet company, haven't you? The L Novovich Ballet? Yes, I'm traveling to Great Britain, and from there, I want to go to America. I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. You wish to forget a challenging proposition when you have that striking tiara as a reminder. But the tiara is mine! I need it to live! I have no money of my own. The Novovich Ballet gives us only a little food and water, and we must dance all over the world. I had to run away. I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. So you ran away to protect yourself? Yes, and the crew of the ship they have all been kind to me. They let me come on board, and they say I could hide in this cabin. That's why they were being shifty. If that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova, it creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yes, it does. What do you think about it, Mr. Naruhodo? Me? Oh, well, yes, of course. I think we should hear Miss Pav Pavlova's explanation. To what conundrum? I'm not sure, but... Conundrum! Miss Pavlova, allow me to pose you a riddle. According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from the ballet. Now that being the case, it must have been last night that you boarded this vessel. However, the SS Buria stopped by no port last night. Ah! That's it, of course. So how is it, pray, that you come to be aboard? 
Now that I think about it, the crewman outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about when the occupant of this cabin came aboard. There's time for business. Yes, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something. An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. Sorry? What was that? It is how the Russian newspaper described one of my performances. And that is how I came here too. I descended from the heavens because I have an angel. Okay, you believe that. Considering English isn't your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. Mr. Sholmes once said, I can never resist the touch of the dramatic. It seems Miss Pavlova is the same. A genius descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to detection. Words once said about myself. A quote from a wonderfully extravagant adver advertisement from the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, in fact. Your description is very vivid in bed. Oh! Yes, yes, Mr. Showy. Anyway, it doesn't look like Miss Pavlova is going to tell us what really happens. Friends. So the friend you mentioned is inside your traveling case, is that right? I don't think animals are allowed on board according to the rules of passage. Oh, please, don't tell, don't tell the crew. If they found my precious... Then the burly Russians would bestir themselves in unison to throw you and your case overboard, no doubt. Ah! So reassuring, Mr. Holmes. But what sort of pet is your friend? A little puppy? It is, isn't it? Or is it a rabbit? Oh, that's what you're asking about! Maybe an adorable little rabbit? It's gonna be a cat. Have a friend and another- yeah, it's gonna be a cat. Ha! You credit Russia as a land with small rabbits, do you? Oh, don't they have small rabbits there then? You may- you may well ask. I have no idea! <sighs> you two are miserable bunglers when it comes to understanding the nature of your young friends, young ballerina's friends. Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken. Really? Consider the benefits. A rousing wake-up call, daily fresh eggs. And when adversity strikes, it could satisfy the needs of sustenance. So you'd eat your friends. I'll remember that. Well, it would appear this friend's identity is a closely guarded secret not to be revealed. Ahahahaha! She obviously doesn't quite trust us yet. There's something I should like to show her, I think. Maybe she might be able to shed some light on it. Oh wait, uh, if I want to present, then I have to go to... Present? Uh... What do I want to present to her? Is it this? Miss Pavlova, would you take a look at this? I don't know. I don't know anything. Mr. Narohoro, you're frightening the poor girl. Oh, sorry. I wasn't trying to. Okay, it wasn't that. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this. A diary. This is the diary of my friend who passed away. His diary? Yes, and he wrote in it last night before he died. Something a little unusual. It reads, 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. And then a few minutes later, 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? I don't understand. It's strange, isn't it? But the ventilator he mentions joins to this cabin, you see. It's up there on the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connect connected to each other. Oh. Miss Pavlova? Has something occurred to you? Does the speckled band of the victim mentioned mean something to you? Or the whistling sound, perhaps? No. I don't know anything. Oh. Stop lying to me! We're not going to tell the crew about your freaking pet! Just... Ugh. 
Excuse me, Mr. Roylat. Yes, what? Wow, she's fast. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain's quarters at once. Please. Alright, I will come now. <laughs> what? You must leave now. Oh, no, it's fine. Don't mind us. <laughs> yes, please don't worry yourself, Mr. Roylot. Get out! <laughs> the passenger said out, or you want me to throw you out. <laughs> Uh, it looks like we'll have to leave investigating this cabin until later. What a pity. Uh, what can you tell me about the Reapers? Reapers? What are Reapers? And so we lost our chance. Wow, she's fast. In bed. <laughs> Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pathlow's cabin, we were unceremoniously chased out. That is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. To be continued. Damn. Well, we learned a lot. We got introduced to uh, characters. Save your current progress. Yes, I lost a point of health. Freaking sucks. Wow, I didn't save once that entire time. Hmm. Okay. Um. Well, it's getting close to two hours now, so I think I'm going to end this here. Just because it's a nice like breaking point, it's just like this section of the uh, case is done, so then like this will be the next section. So yeah, next time I stream will be Thursday and we'll just pick it up from here. Yeah, so I think my new streaming schedule is going to be Tuesday, Thursdays. And if I ever have time, maybe Sundays, maybe Saturdays, but we'll see. I can't promise anything. But yeah, that's it for me tonight. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.